want to share, I want to continue with my sharing. And we are talking about um, giants. Giants. And giants, giants, giants. And um, giants. Giants are there. And there are many. And today we want to look to another giant. This is huge. Is the giant of lust. The giant of lust. And you know we live in a world where, where people are so reluctant to part with this giant. And the giant actually, they perceive it as pleasure. Pleasure. But it is also the same one that is known as lust. And it doesn't matter where we find ourselves even today. Lust still tries to govern and rule the lives of many of us. But we pray that God can deliver us because the power to deliver us is here with us. God can deliver you. God can deliver me. Judges 14 verse 1 to 3. Judges 14 verse 1 to 3. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore, get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. Our definition, for our definition, because we need a definition, uh, for our definition or for my definition or from where I'm coming from, I'm defining lust as craving. It's longing. It's a strong, focused desire for what is forbidden. I want to say that again. For our own definition, lust is a craving. It's a longing. It's a strong focused desire for what is forbidden. Something that is forbidden. And we will be looking at the life of Samson as an example for all of us. Not that Samson was the worst person because in the life of Samson there are also very good things that were happening in the life of Samson. Victories that he brought over his, his people because God brought him for that purpose. But we also look at that man of God who erred because of lust. And lust will kill us if we are not careful. So we'll be looking at certain things about this man of God. First of all, the first point that I want to bring to you is that he was a man of promise. A man of promise. Often when God wants to do great work of deliverance and restoration, he sends what we recognize at first as the most fragile, defenseless thing known to men. And that is called a baby. Every time God wants to do something, he'll, bring, he'll give us a very fragile, defenseless baby. A baby will be born. Even when God knew that 2021 he would need a pastor in Deliverance Church Zimmerman, there was a man called Francis and his wife called Elizabeth. They had to meet and Kimani was to be born. God knew about it. But then that little baby, fragile, with nothing. And the same thing about you. For what you have become, the things that God had prophesied about you or said you will become, you are becoming or you have already become, but you started as a fragile, defenseless baby. When God delivered Israel from Egypt, he sent Moses to his parents, a man called Amran and Jacobed. 
And this baby had to go various cycles. First of all, to be thrown into the Nile and, and so on and so forth. When Israel needed revival, God sent Samuel to Elkanah and Hannah as a baby. But God knew he wanted revival in Israel. Every situation we find it coming, it, it starts with that fragile, even when God wanted to save you and to save me. There was a, a girl somewhere called Mary. She had to be ready to receive the baby. And the baby became our savior, our deliverer. He became God with us. So now Israel needed a deliverer and God sent to Manoah and his wife a son called Samson. Judges 13 verse 3 to 7. Listen to what the Bible says. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine, nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Powerful, powerful words about Samson. The word Nazarite has a specific meaning. Let's look at the Bible's description of what a Nazarite was. Number 6, verse 1 to 8. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to a vow, a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar or wine or vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, for the, the channels even to the husk. Listen to that. All the days of the vow of his separation there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in which he separated himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of his hair of his head. All the days that he separated himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother, for his brother or for his sister when they die, because the consecration of his God is upon his head. All the days of his separation, he shall be holy unto the Lord. Do you get the idea? Nine times in those eight verses, God speaks about the matter of separation. So, we are to separate from all that is enjoyable to abstain from the power of lust. Absolutely, we have to do it. Desire is wonderful and from the Lord. But a desire that is not coordinated or does not bring honor to the Lord becomes lust. Psalms 37 verse 4, you can quote for me. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thine own heart. But you see, the point is, 
I am going to delight in him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to honor him. I'm going to exhort him. And in doing that, I'm abstaining from things that are evil. Therefore, God will bring the desires of my heart, which are godly, to come to pass. I, I hope you can understand from where we talked about the Nazarite. Desire comes from God. And God provides for the appropriate fulfillment of that desire. But if it is not appropriate, it becomes lust. It does not honor God at all. Hebrews 13, 4, for those that are married, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But homongers and adulterers, God will judge. It's a very powerful statement in there. So repeatedly in scripture, we see that God takes pleasure in the pleasure of his children. And God enjoys when I am doing good. He enjoys me when I'm enjoying him. God is so happy when I'm doing the things that he has given me to do. He's so excited about me. He will protect me, he will guide me, he will lead me. As long as my desires and the things that I do are honoring him. But that pleasure must be held within the bones of what is appropriate. Illustration. Two illustrations. Fire is very good. And it is desirable. <laughs> Yesterday I called somebody. Have you ever called somebody and you felt kikitu? I called somebody at night. Ask, and I told, hey, saini wakati wakafiu na munacheka uko. Say, hey, tunacheka area. Tuko neighborhood atutoki. Munafaya nini? Tumeweka moto kwa room. Moto ya thagiri. No bebe tora here. I thought, man, I missed that. You know, tuwe tukichoma maindi hapo. Tukipika ma story. You remember those days that we used to do that? Now, some of you never did. I sympathize with you. Mumekuta magas. Wengine, maweyo. That. Kwa hivyo ukua pandeiri, umeweka kakwa pandeiri, dugi yako umeweka kakwa pandeiri. Na ukisinzia yako inaungua, utaomba mwenzako. So I looked at the scenario last night. These people want to roast my India and so on and so forth. Fire is good. But fire that burns and destroys property is not good because that is destructive. Water in Budalangi is good, but water that sweeps homes is destructive, is not good. Desire is good, but desire that sweeps and destroys, that's not good desire. Samson's life was to be of great promise. This would be fully realized only if his life was obedient and had submitted himself and separated himself from that which would destroy him. But he didn't. Remember we said this is a man of promise. And you're a man of promise too. You're a man of promise. God has a lot of faith in you. God knows with you we can change something. You're a man of promise. The second thing, he was a man of power. Power. Say power. power. Say power again. Power. Man of power. Samson Karau. Those are the Kikuyus, you know, they had a Samson Karau. Somebody, man of power. I, they, there used to be a man in this country, but he died not long ago. A lorry. 20 tons. In Ampita Kwatumbo. Naenda juyake tu inaenda pandi. Tunamulipa mapeni. 
Don't try it at home. Hiyo miguu ni ile ile inauaga watu. Sijui ni alikuwa na pumzi ya kutosha ku sustain. Kwa sababu akikosa pumzi hizo bones zake hizo za zitavunjika. So is my thinking. My nafikiria tu yeye yeah, alikuwa kingangana na tumbo yake kusukuma miguu. Kwa hivyo anajipa anajijaza. Vile tairi inajijazaga, unajijaza. <laughs> Men of power. Let's read together Judges 13 verse 24 to 25. No, 14 verse 1 and 2. 14. 14 no. Paul and his son. 13, 24, 25. Hey, moto, if you queen. And the woman bore a son and called his name Samson, and the child grew. And the Lord blessed them. I want to underline the word blessing because all what you need is a blessing. You too. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Estaol. Immediately, come to the the Spirit of the Lord in Akuja, Kanafanya Maajabu, those things. It is said that both Samson and other judges, that the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. But only of Samson as the judge, it is said, and the Lord blessed him. Blessed him. He was a man of God, a man of power, and a man of blessing. Oh, I pray that God will not only give me grace to be a man of power, but a man of blessing. That God will release his blessing upon me. God will give me both power and blessing. Now we don't know all of the great things Samson did because they are not all listed. But consider some of the incredible physical acts that God moved Samson to accomplish. Number one, he killed a lion barehanded. He slew 30 Palestinians, Philistines with no weapon. Number three, he caught 300 foxes, tumbwa. Anashika haka anaweka. Anashika haka 300. Wewe hata kamoja labda uwezi shika. 300. What a feat. And he tied torches. Na anashika mbili anafunga torches. Anaziachiria. Zinaenda zinachoma shamba. Fourthly, repeatedly he broke attempts to bind him. A couple of times he broke that. Another number. He slew a thousand men. With the jawbone of a donkey. What a man. Incredible. He broke away and carried off the gates of the city of Gaza. Wow. He destroyed a great Philistine up theater. When he was dying, he pulled a theater down. And they all died together. There is no question, therefore, that this man was a man who had seen First hand the power of God upon his life. Yes, he saw it. There is no question about it. God never allows the enemy to gain power over us unless it is a result of our own failure. He will not allow. But if you fail, then the enemy will have room to come and destroy that which God has laid in, in your heart. He never allows us to be brought under the power of evil Unless there is sin involved, he will not. When we depart from him, he puts us in captivity. And we can read that in the story of the judges and the children of Israel. The weakest, the most ignorant believer will be kept from the wills and the power of the enemy as long as the heart of this believer is true and royal to Christ. It doesn't matter how weak this believer is. The power of God will sustain him. What comfort then is that? That the weakest and the most untutored saint and the youngest child of God is perfectly safe as long as there is simplicity of communion with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. That person who had never went to school, as long as they have fellowship with the Lord, God protects him, 
God leads them, God keeps them. So we have seen a man of promise, a man of power, and now we are looking at a man of pleasure. A man of pleasure. Judges 14 verse 1 and 2. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his fathers and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore, get her for me to wife. He saw a woman. The one I have seen means he gazed upon and he studied her with intent. You see, last is very interesting. It is the gazing part. Because you will see it. You will see people. You will, you, you. But the minute you start gazing like David did, the next thing that you're going to find yourself, you'll find yourself in sin. Because you start looking at ways and how you're going to do it. Even people who rape, that's where they start. Gazing too much, staying in the place for too much. Run for your life like Joseph. Run. Oh, me, I'm powerful. Me, I'm... Watcha. Hizo story zako. Watcha. Watcha hizo story zako. Samson, at this point, is being directed by the last of the eye. The eyes. As he watched her, he wanted her. He, he saw what was forbidden, but changed his conviction to accommodate his passions. And that's what people do. It is forbidden, but brother, sister, you, you guess too much, then you turn your conviction, you turn, uh, eventually you want to think about and accommodate it in your passion. As Samson continually looked upon her, he eventually got what he thought he wanted. You know, some of us get married and it was last. And last does not last. Because if you lasted for her, you last for another one. Simple. Samson continually looked upon her, eventually got what he thought he wanted. Judges 16 verse 1, the Bible says, Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an ahalot and went unto her. You see, you, what you last, you last for more. That's why God needs to help us and save us from last. And this is one of the great dangers of pornography. According to the survey by Glance Ministries, pornography starts from as early as when you are in primary, especially now with the new gadgets. And they say this, 77% of Christian men and 60% of Christian women, they have admitted in the past to have a struggle with lust and pornography. 50% of Christians, men, and 20% of Christian women, they have said it has overcome them. They are captives of pornography. 60% of Christian men and 40% of Christian women had sexual sin in their life not too long before the, the survey. According to the internetfilterreview.com, the largest consumer of internet pornography, they say the most affected are between 12 years and 17 year olds but even if you are a hundred year old, it has the power to keep you captivated into it. While Hebrews 10, 32 says, tells that Samson was a man of faith, he certainly wasn't a faithful man. Of course, he called God at times and he got victory. Yeah, man of faith, but in his life, he wasn't faithful. And that is the biggest danger that we find ourselves. Because God has done it for you 
You think because God delivered you, you don't seek faithfulness. May God have mercy upon us. He wasn't faithful to the teaching of his parents. He wasn't faithful to his Nazarite vow to the Lord, to the people of Israel, or to the laws of God. He was a man faithful to himself and pleasing to his lusts. He was faithful to that which pleased him. You remember we started by saying what a Nazarite is, and if some of you that were following, you know that he broke all of them. All. Anything that was said, he broke it. Because he was a man of presumption, a presumptuous man. Samson's fall began when he started little presumptions. For example, the first part of Judges 14 verse 5, the Bible says, He walked among the vineyards. Vineyards are a dangerous place to be for a man who is not supposed to to have anything to do with the grapes, even the, the husks. That's what his vow was. But he's walking there enjoying himself. Now, don't tell me he never got tempted to taste some of those vines that were there. But he was not supposed even to touch the, the maganda of those things. Nifale tu kujigamba mimi ni meoko kata ni kipita hapa sita shikuwa na ikwanza kwanza wakofu nuwanema hmm God even sent Samson a great warning because in the grapes, in the vines, where lions don't roam, there was a lion. A warning for him. Great warning, but he refused to get the warning. And a lot of us, God has warned us, but we have not picked the signal of his warning. The Bible says in verse 5 and 6, Then went Samson down and, uh, down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion rolled against him and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Of course, he killed it. Remember, it is Satan, a rolling lion who is walking, seeking. Whatever that lion was doing, there was a warning for Samson. Presumption is expecting the blessing and the protection of God while continuing to violate his commands. You know, it doesn't work. For example, an illustration here. It's like praying that God would keep me from hitting that wall. All right? Okay? I'm praying, God, deliver me from hitting this wall. Deliver me from this hitting wall. Deliver me from this thing. And I'm going towards it. What will happen? This wall has been there. Every time we pray, we, we go there to touch it. But we don't go through it. So presumption is that way. Atibwana, nilinde, nisianguke katika thambi ya uzinzi, and you open pornography, you're looking at it, and then, mimi sita, oh friends, utanguka, itakuangusha, ndugu wa madada. A number of things that Samson assumed. Samson assumed that you continue to enjoy the blessing of God while continuing to violate the principles that provide for it. Two, he also, and sometimes we also think the same, that we can enjoy intimacy with our spouses while we continue to commit mental adultery with those around us. It doesn't work. We think we can have power to proclaim the gospel and do the work of the ministry while we continue to visit the field of the flesh so easily accessible to us in the internet, it doesn't work. We think we can raise godly children while we continue to play around in chat rooms or in the internet. When is the point, where is the point of no return or when is the point of no return? 
It is when you think you can handle it, Samson's presumption is seen repeatedly in us. Number one, he considered a Philistine as a spouse. Number two, he walked among the vineyards. He, was, he took honey from the carcass of the slain lion and he was not supposed to touch a dead thing. He made a riddle or a joke from the Philistines out of his own scene. He went into the harlot in Gaza. He fell in love with Delilah. Judges 16 verse 4. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of uh, Sorik whose name was Delilah. Delilah lived in the Philistine, uh, Philistine city of Shirok. Or Shirik means choice vines. Yani pombe ile ile mzuri. Samson couldn't stay out of the vineyards. He even married in the vineyards. One of Satan's most effective plans is to make himself appear utterly insignificant so that we think little of him. Yani you think he's not there. But you know potentially there are some consequences of the action that you make. He wants to remove, he wants to move you out of what God has called you. And I want to finish by saying anybody who walks in that path ends up in pain. A man of pain or a woman of pain. Judges 16 verse 20 to, to 21. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee. Samson and he awoke cut off, out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wasn't that the Lord was departed from him. He thought he would wake up and shake himself again. Verse 21. But the Philistines took him, put out his eyes, brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and did grind in the prison house. Man of pain. Why? Although man of power, although man of promise, he lived a life of pain and there could be people listening to me from where you are. Because of what you have gotten yourself in, you are a man or a woman living in pain. With all what God has promised they would do, we find ourselves living in pain. Living. The pleasures are temporarily and they do fade away. Samson's life ends tragically. Could he have escaped the condemnation of lust? Absolutely he could. Can you? Absolutely you can. Because the wonderful news is that if you know what it means to be born from above, to be saved, to be part of the family of God through Jesus Christ, then you can escape the power of lust. Put this verse and remember it from today. Second Peter 1.4. It is wonderful. It says this. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by this promises we might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We are given exceedingly great and precious promises. Take them with you. And God is going to prosper you. How great is this promise? And this promise is given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, he carried it. The great counselor carried it so that he can help us. The promise he carried to us. Those promises of his divine nature have been revealed to us. Why are they revealed to us? So that we can overcome this condemnation, these things that come to us from the corruption that is in the world through lust. Because it is lust. Remember what James tries to tell us. What causes us to fall into those sins is our lust. Going back to what the Bible says in Judges 13, 17, 20, Then Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? 
that when thy saying come to pass, we, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why ask me thou after my name, seeing it is a secret? The word secret here comes from the same root used in Isaiah 9, verse number 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. I believe that was the secret but it was carried by our Lord Jesus Christ because he is the deliverer. Samson ought to have been a deliverer, but he got bound by the last of his eyes. James tells us and warns us, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. Our gracious Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is a giant out there, and it is a big giant. And dear Father, this giant wants to destroy our families and our homes. It wants to destroy our young people. It wants to destroy the body of Jesus Christ. It wants to destroy the Samsons that are within us. Samsons that have come to deliver, to help the nations. But the corruption of this world has blinded them so that they have fallen into the last. But we thank you because of the promises that you have promised us. The divine nature that has been revealed to us that we can overcome. We can overcome and we will overcome in the name of the Lord. I don't know where you stand in terms of last. The last of the eye, the last of the flesh. Lasting to the things that you want to put into your flesh. Or last thing to the things that you want to do give you gratification. I don't know where you find yourself. But you know what? You can pray a prayer and tell the Lord, God, deliver me. Because you are my deliverer. Deliver me and my eyes will make a covenant with you. That you shall not look. Those kind of prayers work. I pray that you can get into your closet and have a conversation with your eyes a conversation with your last so that you overcome it and put it under your feet. Heavenly Father, I know in the month of May it comes to an end, but we move into the month of June. We pray, dear Father, the month of June, the giant of last will be a done thing. We will walk in your grace, dear Father. We will walk in honoring you and obeying you. We know we are a man of promise. You have promised us to give us the kingdom. We know that, dear Father, we are a man of power. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Deliver us from presumption and sin. Deliver us, Lord. And Lord, don't cause us not to walk through pain in this life, but give us the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. We honor you and we give you thanks, for this is our prayer. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't know where you are, maybe watching us from your house or in the church or in the tent, or at the corridor. But you know what? The best place for you to start is believing the Lord Jesus Christ. If you live your life in his hands, if you desire him to lead you and guide and you obey him, not like Samson, you obey him, your life will be worthy living. And I would like to pray for you. For he that is in Christ is a new creature. Are you deciding to be a new creature? To have power over sin and flesh and the things that put you down? If you are in the church and I can see you, and you want to pray this prayer with me of receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can put your hand up and put it down. I will pray for you in the name of the Lord. You are saying, I want to receive Jesus Christ today, the 30th of May, 2021. I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Wherever you are, if somebody sees your hand, we'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful service. May the Spirit of the Lord move and guide us. And those that desire to be born again, yes, they will run to the Savior and find mercy and grace to help them in times of need or when they feel so low. We honor you and we give you thanks for we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. The good Lord bless you and prosper your June.